I never go to Facebook with my problems. But y'all need to hear this. I'm working four motherfucking jobs, busting my motherfucking ass, man. I've been taking care of this girl since she was 19, man. We've been living together. I got three motherfucking jobs, man. I ain't never fooled around on or none of that, man. I come home from work tonight. And I knew something went right because I was supposed to work a double. But I come home from work tonight. And even before I came home, excuse me, I'm out of breath. She keep calling me asking am I working a double, so... I lie and tell her, yeah. Uh, you know, I stick the key in the door. First off, when I, I I get off the bus down the street from the house, I see a car parked in the driveway that I ain't never seen in the driveway before. So, I stick the key in the door, man. I stick the key in the door, man. I walk in and I, I hear goddamn bad rider running and shit, candles and shit. Candles and shit laid in the bathtub. I walk in this motherfucker, man. It's a goddamn nigga naked, man. A nigga naked, man. Standing in my motherfucking bathroom, man. Standing in my motherfucking bathroom, man. A motherfucking nigga standing in my bathroom naked, man. Standing in my motherfucking bathroom naked, man. Got my bitch up on the sink. Motherfucking candles and shit. Eating that motherfucking pussy, man. So you know what I did? I backed away, man. I went in the kitchen. The tool drawer. I came back. I busted the door, and I bust that bitch in her motherfucking head with this motherfucking hammer. Now this to all you cheating ass bitches out there. Don't fuck around and let your man catch you. You go fuck around and get busted your goddamn head with a hammer. Her goddamn ass laying goddamn in the garage right now. I'm about to cut this bitch up, put her in the trunk, and toss her ass over in the goddamn rip the uh, goddamn. I'm about to toss this bitch in the motherfucking right over there on the Cincinnati Bridge. I'm going into Kentucky. They gonna find this bitch floating by the Bengals practice field. Think I'm playing, man. I'm, I work too goddamn hard for this. The goddamn nigga thought he just was gonna get up out of there, so I bust him in his motherfucking head with a hammer. He fell in the bathtub, and I threw the goddamn radio in the tub. He in there burnt up now. All you women out here fucking around on y'all's man, you dirty ass bitches, you ain't no good, you need to be killed. God damn it. And I, after this, I'm putting this on the internet, I'm going down to the police station and tell them, yes, I bust that bitch in the head with a hammer. I never. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Or continue to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Manatazak with GMS Saints in the Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the spirit, uh, I got together with the, the elder brother, uh, Council Doc from GMS Inland Empire. And we're going to do this spiritual collab on a recent um, event that happened of a Jake who basically committed a murder because he caught his wife in the act of adultery with another man in his house. Okay, now the world is going to have their own uh, public opinion based on emotion and, and, and personal circumstance. Okay, but we're here to bring this uh, situation out through the scriptures and what the scriptures say on how to conduct yourself in a uh, situation like this. Now, of course, we understand that we're in captivity and there's certain uh, liberties in the law that, that we're... Um, held held uh, accountable to and certain things that we that we can't do okay now uh the truth of the matter is regardless of how you look at it and how you think this jake was actually in the right according to the scriptures now we understand that we are still in captivity okay and he's currently okay locked up right now because he made a, 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 a open confession on social media and turned himself in Okay, there's different ways to go about that, but the fact of the matter is, if this was the ancient world, okay, this man will be walking free, okay? And we're entering into a time where we're coming back to living uh, 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 under the law, statutes, and commandments that were set up by the Heavenly Father. And these laws, statutes, and commandments were set up for a particular reason, okay? To keep order and maintain order, all right? Now, we all seen the clip. I don't really need to... Uh, to stress, you know, the, the details about it, okay, but we're going to go into the law, okay, because we don't go off of our own vain opinion, and, and, and 
and uh, you know how we feel and how we think. Okay. Sure, he should have used wisdom, but at the same time, he was in the right. All right. Now uh, this is Exodus um, chapter twenty, verse fourteen. Okay. Exodus 20 and 14, which says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. All right? Now, when you go into Exodus 20, it goes into the Ten Commandments. Okay? And it's plain as day. We all know, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, you know uh, uh, that this world is under the assumption, and when I say this world, I mean mainly our women are under the assumption, okay, that men cheat. Okay? That, that you know, when we go out and we uh, uh, do what we do with other women, that we're cheating and breaking some kind of covenant with our spouse. But the truth of the matter is, a man can't cheat, okay? Because a man is, is allowed, according to the scriptures, according to the law, to have more than one woman. The difference is, okay, if she's uh, be betrothed or engaged to another man, we can't touch her, okay? If she is already married and, and if she belongs to another man, we can't touch her. Okay, but if she doesn't belong to another man and she's past the flower of her youth, she, she's free for, for the taking, so to speak. Okay? Now, now a woman, on the other hand, okay, a woman can, can commit adultery. And in this case, this is exactly what happened. She belonged to another man. That man came home and saw another man serving his wife in his house. Okay? And there's a judgment for that, according to the scriptures. We're going to get it. Deuteronomy 22 and 22. And let's see what it says. Because all things uh, are, are filtered through the scriptures. This is Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. We just read the law. Now let's read the judgment. It says, If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Okay? That isn't my own private interpretation or my own vain opinion. That's the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh So if you take this situation at face value, this man shouldn't even be locked up. But we are under, uh, uh, we are in captivity. We aren't under the, uh, the new covenant where the laws are written in our inward parts. Because a situation like this will never happen in the kingdom to come. Because these laws, statutes, and commandments are going to be written within us. Okay? We're going to be given a body that can't sin. So, 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 so the very thought of committing adultery against your brother and defiling his wife wouldn't even cross our minds. But we are going to know the judgment in case that happens with these other nations. Okay? And I'm reading it right here. So according to what the scripture says, this man is innocent. Okay, and even in Esau's court system, you have different loopholes, okay, in his legislature and in his laws. And there's something called a crime of passion, okay, and I got the definition for that. Okay, uh, uh, a crime of passion is basically a crime that has been committed under extreme rage or emotional distress or emotional disturbance, okay? It says commonly referred to as heat of passion, okay? It says something provoked the defendant who in the heat of passion committed a crime, okay? It says the distinction of murder being a crime of passion rather than being planned or premeditated can mean a far lesser prison sentence. So instead of a, a 99 year max sentence for a committed premeditated murder, okay? Uh, you can get a two year minimum if that act of murder was under the crime of passion. And clearly, you can see his duress and his, his, his anguish while he made his, uh, his social media post. And the, the act he committed, that, that was a crime of passion. In the heat of passion. He was with that, that, that woman since he, he was, uh, the, since she was 19. He's working three jobs, providing a stable living, a roof under her head. Okay. Busting his back at work to provide for her and then comes home to see her getting served by another man. You, you damn right. That was it, it, the act he committed was in the heat of passion. In regards to what you think and how you feel, that was righteous. But it was ultimately judgment too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get some scriptures. Because at the end of the day, a woman is supposed to be uh, 
you know, our pillar of rest, not our pillar of stress. Okay, he shouldn't even have the inkling, okay, to miss work because he should know that she's supposed to be doing what she's supposed to be doing. But we have lost that trust and that bond between our significant other here in captivity in Babylon the Great. Uh, this is Genesis 2, beginning at verse 18. All right. It says, it says, and the Lord, Yahweh Shemashai said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. Okay? So going into verse 21, this is going into how uh, uh, the Most High created, you know, woman as a helper for the men. Okay? A help me for the men which was her purpose because when you go into the definition of the very word woman okay it means female servant all right so this is genesis 2 and 21 it says and the lord you have Hashem uh caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and, and the rib which the lord you have Hashem had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man okay now, this isn't talking about an actual rib, okay, that he took from Adam, okay, uh, this is a, someone of uh, Adam, basically, his, his, someone close, a close relative of his, okay, uh, his kinfolk, so to speak, a fellow tribeswoman, all right, um, because uh, when you go into the scriptures, men and, uh, uh, man and woman were already created, Adam and Eve were not the first, you know, two people on earth, okay, uh, Genesis 5 and 2 will uh, better detail that. Okay. But continuing on in Genesis 2 and 23, it says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his, woman, his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Okay. One flesh. All right. I'm going to get the book of Sirach and the Apocrypha which is uh, Ecclesiasticus, okay, uh, 36 and 24, which reads, He that getteth a wife, he getteth a possession, okay? Also, another scripture going to show that the woman was made for the man, and when that man has a wife, that's his possession, in righteousness, of course. But continuing on, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest, okay? A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. That is the duty and the job of a woman ultimately. And also to, to, to bear the, the seed and the children of that man. Okay. Nowhere does it say that she's supposed to partake in the rod of another man. All right. In, in, in the kingdom, whichever uh, man a woman lays with, that's going to be her husband forever. Okay. Uh, let's get a Proverbs 6 beginning at 32. The Proverbs chapter 6, beginning at verse 32, which reads, But whoso commits adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Okay? And that's exactly what happened with that man. Whether he knew she was married or not, he paid the repercussions of that. Okay? It says, a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. And you heard what he did. You heard what he was about to do to her. You heard what he did to him. Okay? And what his fate was. Rage is the jealousy of a man, as the scripture says. And it says, and, he, and therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Okay? So I'm sure that guy was trying to beg and plead, but it did, didn't work. He still got the, the, the recompense, okay, of his actions. Man. 
So, I mean, that, that's just a couple scriptures, you know, uh, collabing with the brother Todd. You know, I'm sure he's going to go in as well. But that just goes to show you, okay? When things aren't in order, this is the result of what happens, okay? This is the result of what happens when you don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. This is the result of what happens, okay, when we're in captivity under these heathens and our women are gathering abroad. Our men are living lawless. That's why the scriptures say, had it not been for that small remnant, we would have been in Sodom and Gomorrah. We would be destroyed as a people. We need salvation. We need to be made perfect with these law, statutes, and commandments put in our inward parts. And Lord willing, that time is soon to come. So with that, I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it to the brother Todd through the spirit. Shalom. Man, Shalom, Shalom. This is Todd's doc from the GMS Los Angeles camp. Coming back here with the truth and the spirit of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Hey, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace of salutation for the whole flag, Akim, that's pushing this word in true sincerity. So, the video you've seen was an act of a, a woman, you know, a man, um, he, he was, um, giving his testimony, you know, of what he did and what happened. And, and you saw, you know, I, I know the brother, Manada Zag, probably saying the same thing right now, but, um, he caught his, his wife. And, and, and he called his wife in the act of adultery. You know, do you see this man, he working three jobs, you know, to keep food on the table and to please his woman, all right? You know why? Because in actuality, a man's glory is is, is, is is of his woman, okay? All right? And, and it, it has proof right there that a man loves harder than a goddamn woman, man, period, and stuff. Now, we don't know the gist of it, you know, but the point is she was caught in the act of adultery and he did what was biblical, which was righteous in biblical terms, but but a uh, but buffoon over here in this world terms because right now, now he in a slammer looking at the walls right now, okay? He's looking at the walls and thinking like, damn, you know what I'm saying? He, he just having that scene replayed in his head consistently when he walked into the bathroom and saw what he saw. You know, he seen a guy getting his face plastered with with um some with vagina juice, and he was getting down and he saw that and he just got the hammer and he did the deed. So, but this is all scriptural. You know, I seen I seen a lot of um, comments and say, oh, he should have thought of no man. He shouldn't, I don't want to hear, he shouldn't have thought about, jealousy is a rage of a man, man. That's a whole different spirit. So these guys that be commenting on the ball, I should know, man. You do that with a wife you have for years, and you busting your ass, and you see that, you cannot control what, what the spirit going to put, you, you cannot control that type of action, man. Okay, especially, especially if you love this woman. All right, so let's get it, man. This is Sirach, the third chapter. Verse 9. It's going it's to be a quick lesson, you know. This is Sirach 3, verse 9. For the blessing of the Father established the house of the children. What does it mean, establish the house of the children? The Father is the rock of the household, okay? I ain't talking about Rock Emerson. I'm a garbage man. I'm talking about he's the head of the household, man. All right? He's the foundation of that household. It's the fathers, the males, all right? But this society right now teaches... You opposite, all right? It teaches you that the woman is the head of the household. The woman runs everything, all right? So this is um Sirach 3, verse 9, and it reads, For the blessing of the father established the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundation. And, and that's what you saw, a clear-cut scene, what you saw when the, when the, when the dude spoke about what happened that was a clear cut when, when she went to the act of adultery she just broke that whole foundation down it's like <clears throat> let me give you a man point of view a man loves a woman man we got this castle right and we gonna put that woman in the castle all right so he doing all this just to please her which come on man the scripture said 
Well, he's just a normal, he gets a, a regular two third, man. All right? But you don't supposed to give your whole spirit unto a woman, your whole strength. All right? And stuff. And that's what he clearly did. That's why he he committed that. He committed that act, man. That's why he went crazy. Okay? Because he put all his life unto this woman. Okay? So what you clearly see, what he described was a clear cut of a breaking of a foundation. Okay? So... Let's get it up because these women right now, they just live off of lust and, and emotions. All emotions, man. All right. So what happened in that bathroom scene when she was in the bathroom getting her, you know, getting her um her kitty licked, right? While she plastering the dude's face with her with her juices. All right. Don't mean to say, but I gotta keep it raw. Okay. You know? Um, she was living in the moment, okay? She was living in pleasure. So let's get this out real quick. Let me get it out. All right. Before I bring out James. All right. This is um Timothy. Let's get it out. First Timothy 5 verse 6. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So while she was committing the act of adultery with this man. Okay. She was living in pleasure. But at the same time. She was dead, man. Why? Because she broke the law. The act of adultery. Do you know the the do you know the result? The consequence of committing adultery according to the law of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is death. Okay? As you can see, what happened? She got hammer time, man. Alright? And the man. And he threw the radio in the tub and let them cook. Okay? So they were both be, they were both were um, put to death, man. But at that time, she was living in pleasure. All right? She was living in that ecstasy, man. You know? <laughs> man. But you know what? All praise to Yah, Bashim, Yah, Bashad, man. The Lord is not playing around, man. But when he put that death angel spirit, that spirit on somebody, man, there's no, there's nothing you can do, man. And guess what? This was judgment from Yah, Bashim, Yah, Bashad. All right? So this is 1 Timothy 5, verse 6. But she that liveth in pleasure... Is dead while she liveth. All right, so let's go with the next scripture. All right, because what he did, he was in full rage, man. All right, full rage. Okay, I'm talking about super sane form type of rage, man. All right, this is Proverbs the sixth chapter, verse thirty-four. See now, a lot of women watching this video is gonna get emotional. Oh, he shouldn't do that. He just threw his life away. Well, you know what? You're not a man to understand this, man. Okay? Because a woman glories her hair. All right? A woman glories not her man, man. It's her hair. All right? So you're not going to understand the spirit of a man, man. All right? So it's going to read right here. This is um Proverbs, the sixth chapter, verse 34. I and mean, it reads, For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. What was that? Did he spare anybody in the day of his vengeance? No, he did it, man. He got that hammer, cocked back, blasted in the head with that hammer. Got the dude, too. They threw the radio in the tub, man. Okay? All right? Let's read it again. Proverbs 6, verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither he will rest content, though thou givest many gifts. So there's, no matter what you can say to this man, the spirit of death was on this man, all right? To, to fulfill what? <laughs> the consequence of what they did, man, death, okay? They committed adultery, man. And this was all through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man. That's what it was, man. Both that woman and that man was put to death, man. Okay? So I read in Proverbs 6, chapter, verse 34. For jealousy is the rage of a man. So you women that's watching this video, you're not going to understand the jealousy of a man. Why? Because you're not a man to understand the emotional um, stuff that's going on in his head, man. He basically threw his life. He basically... Put his whole life on this woman, man. Which men don't supposed to be fucking doing. Period, man. Alright? 
I'm, I'm saying it through the scriptures. The scriptures said, do not give thy strength unto a woman, your whole strength. You're not supposed to do that, man. Okay? We have a shit. Us men and Lord, our, our, our real woman is this word, these scriptures. This prophecy, man. All right? We got to balance things together. You, of course, we're going to love our wives, man. Of course, we're going to do that. Of course, we know we're going to have a good time with the children and our wives and stuff. Of course, we're going to love our woman. All right? But we have a duty as men of the Lord. Okay? And on our, our real woman is this word. All right? So, let's go to James, man. Let's go to James real quick. Let's go to James. All right? Because I'm going to show you. Let's find it here. I think it's James 3 and 15, I believe. Hold on for a sec. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Be patient with me. Bring it forth death. All right? Because it's going to tell you, step by step, what happened with these two individuals. What they were doing. So, this is the yeah, James, the first chapter. Here we go. All right, James, first chapter. Verse 14, all right? All right? But every man is tempted, all right? So this man that was in this house, he was tempted by the sexual desire of this woman, all right? So he was tempted. He went to his house. He was butt naked in the bathroom, getting into the foreplay, right? And this is part of, this is sin, man, okay? This is, this is, this is unrighteous, man. All right, at the man's own house, man. The disrespect. See, a lot of you Negroes out there, you Latino men, your love committing adultery. Why? Because it's like a sport to you, man. And guess what the result is gonna be? It's gonna be death or castration or something. You might get killed for over that bullshit, man. All right. James one verse fourteen. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. All right. Then when lust have conceived, they're already conceiving, man. They were going into the foreplay. All right. It bringing forth sin. What is sin according to the Bible? Sin is breaking of the law. Okay. And what was the law they broke? It was adultery. What's, that's part of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not cover another man's wife. Okay. Then the lust had conceived it. Bringing forth sin And sin When it is finished Bringing forth death And look what happened Those two individuals Was put to death So Let's get the Let's get the um The law on adultery Because they committed sin Alright So Exodus 20 verse 14 Thou shalt not commit adultery Alright Let's go to another one Leviticus 20 chapter verse 10 and the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, okay? As you can see on that display, what he was describing, there was a man butt naked in the bathroom with his wife. And when he stepped in, when he turned the key to enter the apartment, and he saw those rose petals all over the floor, you know, they were probably playing some Jodeci, whatever, or playing playing some whatever too late today is on bullshit music to play all right they were playing some r&b getting in the mood you know she thought she thought he was doubling to make extra ends <laughs> it's sad man real sad hold on a sec give me a sec okay leviticus 20 verse 10 and the man that committed adultery with another man's wife even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. And as you can see, that was the result of their actions, man. From committing adultery, what was the result? They were both put to death, man. And it was, and it was all praise to Yahweh Bashim I was like, I was like, yeah! I was like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord is not playing with you women, man. All right? You women that have husbands, Stay true to your husband, man. I don't want to hear no excuses, man. Oh, he doing this. He's always working. He not home all the. He not home all the time. Well, he's out there busting his ass, and this guy working three jobs just to please her funky ass, man. You know what I'm saying? But you know, 
in these times right now, I tell you, man, you men out there, know your worth, man, okay? Hold yourself in a high regard. If the woman's right here, why put yourself over here? You over here, she need to be up there, man. Either you're going to ride the train or get the hell off. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's cause a, that's a whole different topic, man. I might just get into that and stuff. But, um, man, so that was the result of adultery. You know, I just want to get into this, me and this brother, being this brother, Manatazak. So, so with that, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Rakakadash. Hey, double honors for the apostles and the others, a great millstone. Peace and salutation for the whole flag, Akim. That's pushing the word too. Series to then another video. Shalom.